Let's begin what's trending today in Nigeria. Yoruba activist Sunday Igboho in a now viral video has declared a Yoruba nation. He made the declaration during a conference in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, insisting that it was time the Yoruba became a sovereign nation. With the declaration, the activists called on Yoruba people in other territories to return home before war breaks out. He also called on all traditional rulers in Yoruba land to support the movement in order to free the Southwest from slavery. This is reoccurring. It's, it's, it's like every week we find a new activist calling for their own nation. I re remember we talked about this and you offered a solution, whether it is a federation or some sort, maybe. I don't know what your thoughts are on this case, but I feel like it's just, again, what we're facing in Nigeria. Yeah, another day, another declaration. Yes. He's actually um, come into the limelight, as it were, quite mm -hmm. suddenly because of his clamoring about security in the Southwest, the insecurity that we're facing here in the Southwest. And this is the solution that he has proffered. Everybody should just go their separate ways. Because at this point, if it's every man for himself, because leaders from all over the country have called on people to start to arm themselves. And scandalously, even government officials have said, you'll recall, the Minister of Defense saying that people were cowards for not attacking the bandits. So if it's everybody, every man for himself, it might as well just become every region for itself. This is the ridiculous point that we have gotten to here because this unitary system simply is not working. We must restructure now. And we discussed this recently. Mm. You brought the story yes. about Asari Dokubu making his own declaration about the Biafra customary government, which was dismissed, laughed out of the room, basically, by the Minister for Information, Alaji Lai Mohammed. But if the government decides to take this approach with Sunday Adeyemo, great for him. If they decide to take the approach that they did with Omoyele Shogure, who you will recall did not even ask for any kind of a nation, he was trying to protest about um, the economy, yes, security, really free education, yeah. and they slammed treason charges on him. You'll recall he was held for a year, granted bail, rearrested. His travels continue till today. We discussed recently when he went for his last court appearance with a controversially dressed gentleman by his side. So the Nigerian government will wait to see how they respond to this particular latest call. And I do hope that beyond all of this, we see the importance, the necessity at this point, right now, to restructure this country once and for all. Well said, Tundu. <clears throat> well, I think this is frightening. Uh, it's an indication of the uh, strife, the division, the problem with Nigeria. Uh, non-state actors like uh, Sunday Uguhu, uh, like uh, Asari Dokubo, like uh, Namdi Kanu, and so on, have become uh, the new uh, intellectuals of the Nigerian community. And the rhetoric that comes from many of these non-state actors uh, is a rhetoric of division, is the rhetoric of violence, is the rhetoric of confrontation. And we need to remind those uh, who go to the extreme point uh, even in asking for justice, even in asking for equity within the Nigerian arrangement, that the Constitution of Nigeria says that Nigeria shall be one indivisible entity. And it is on the basis of that that uh, the government clamps down on anybody who talks about secession. Now, before now, if you look at the rhetoric coming from uh, the Southwest, not too many of the groups. You have the uh, Yoruba Elders Council, you have the uh, Afeni Ferry. You have the uh, Yoruba World Congress. You have the uh, Omo Dudua uh, group. Not many of those groups, you know, uh, have been talking about secession mm. of the Yorubas. The, uh, retro the uh, message, the ideological message has been one of restructuring from Afeni Ferry and also one of self-determination uh, within the Nigerian arrangement. But Ibu, in the uh, videos that have been circulating, has been talking about secession has been talking about the declaration of the, uh, Ududua, of the Republic of Ududua. Now, I don't know the intellectual wink that is behind that, but one or two videos that he has uh, re released or that he has been involved in recently uh, could, in my own estimation, be considered frightening. In one video, he is alleged to have said that if any politician in the Southwest decides to campaign or seek office in 2023, uh, that the security of such persons cannot be guaranteed. 
In this second video, the one that you have shown, he says very clearly that Niger uh, Yorubas are tired of uh, the Nigerian arrangement. Enough is enough. Uh, that, uh, you know, his group will reopen any border uh, that is closed. And he called on Yorubas to unite. And he went further to say every Yoruba man that is in the north should return home. Yes. Because now it is time to confront these people. Uh, and he was talking about the Fulanis occupying major institutions in the southwest. The ports. Yeah. He mentioned the ports particularly. The airports, the seaports, Tinkan Island and Apapa port. Now, in a federation, in a country like this, uh, that could be something that could uh, generate a lot of tension. And already, a group, Arewa Youth uh, Assembly, uh, also issued a statement with a spokesperson of that group saying, yes, uh, Sunday Go says uh, Fulani should leave the southwest and that uh, Yoruba should leave the north. So that group also within the last 24 hours has said every Yoruba man should leave the north. And they are even calling on the security agencies to support them to get Yoruba people in the northern part of the country out of the place. So what is this? What it means is that Nigeria is sitting on a keg of gunpowder. Across the country, you have this rhetoric of division. And I think it's unfortunate that we have reached such a level. And that is why the government of the day must take public opinion seriously. You can't discount the agitation from all of these people. We had a 2014 National Political Conference. We have had several conferences in the past. Uh, all of that was being ignored. We have seen the urgency of dialogue. Right. We have seen the urgency of the need to take a second look at the uh, Nigerian arrangement. We have seen the, a very serious need to look at the meaning, whether or not we have a nation, and what it means to be a Nigerian. Well said, Dr. Abati. Rufai, your take on this story. This reminds me of Benjamin Disraeli's book, former British Prime Minister. He was also an author. The book is called Sea Bill, or Two Nations. In that book, there were two nations, the nations of those that have and those that don't have. And that is what is playing out here. There are agitations by people that the country is not working for. And the people that it is working for are looking at them and saying, what are you talking about? And it's a very sad place to be. In the space of one week, two declarations. We've got Asari Dokubo, he said this on his own part. We've got Sunday Go saying this now. Government should be responsive to the agitations. We should listen to people across board and try to fix whatever might be the problems and not to appear to take sides. Because it's our nation, and it is one nation we have. But truth and justice and fairness makes a nation. The insecurity challenges that have brought all of this to the front burner should be addressed forthwith. Because if we don't do that, then we are sitting, I'll quote Dr. Bati now, on a keg of gunpowder mixed with dynamite. It is sad. And I'll tell you what leaders do. In the 70s, Canada too had this agitation. There were a group of people called the Front de Libération de Quebec, fighting for the independence of Quebec. Were kidnappings, were harassing people and all of that. The Quebecans supported them, the Quebecois. But guess what? There was also a leader called Elliot Trudeau that stood tall and said, we must change the country. It brought about what is called the Victorian Charter that led to the Constitutional Act of 1982 in Canada that brought about bilingualism and a lot of restructuring in the Canadian system to douse the tension. Today, Elliot Trudeau is still remembered to be the father of unity in Canada because he took a stand. Leadership should take a stand, listen to the voice of those agitating and try to rein people in and bring unity back. It is in times of crisis you know who a true leader is. Well Winston Churchill was celebrated because of how he stood tall during the Second World War. This is the time for the Nigerian leadership to stand twice as tall to unite this country. Please subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Subscribe. Share this video. Subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends to subscribe to this channel.